Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand and a mic will come to you. Uh, please keep your questions brief. We'd like to accommodate as many as we can. I'm Sri Harsha. I'm a student of Bits Pilani. My question is regarding with uh, the article on freedom of expression. What relevance does Article 19, Clause 2 of the Indian Constitution or the Certification Board of India have today? Does it, in the sense, with, the, with respect to the recent ban or what relevance does a certification board or even a restriction for freedom of speech have in India today? It's a, it's a very interesting question because, in fact, uh, when 66A was struck down, the judgment, which I understand was drafted largely by Justice Nariman, uh, made some pretty sweeping observations, uh, uh, interesting observations, ones that I have no difficulty agreeing with, but which seemed to raise a fundamental question about Article 19.2, since Article 19.2 foresees, quote unquote, reasonable restrictions on freedom of speech. What are these reasonable restrictions? There are, as you know, seven or eight specific things spelt out, but some of those can be liable to misuse. One of the very interesting uh, examples given where the, con the Constitution permits the government to restrict freedom of expression is if it compromises relations with friendly countries. That would make all foreign policy debates or foreign policy analysis impossible. Fortunately, no Indian government has actually tried to follow the letter of that by restricting discussion of foreign policy in this country. But it's an example wherein I have published books on foreign policy which are very critical of foreign countries. And the last thing I would want is somebody saying under Article 19.2 this book should be banned. Now, I think that what's interesting with 66A, the judgment, and the increasing sense of a liberal fight back against the mounting intolerance we've seen in Indian society in recent years, is that perhaps the time is beginning to come for a genuine rethink of the, the entire uh, attitude to freedom of expression as enshrined in 19.2. Maybe, it may be too premature for me to say this, all this is very fresh, but maybe we should start looking afresh at these eight areas of restrictions. Um, already, uh, the question of the Board of Film Censors is being increasingly challenged by filmmakers themselves. This is a legacy of the British rule, but the British themselves have abolished their own censor board and they now simply have a film certification authority, which no longer snips the films, just says that this film has to be watched only if you're above 18 or if you're between 14 and 18, you have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. Or that kind of classification is all they're doing. Whereas in India, we're still following the old British practice of dictating that certain scenes or certain expressions, certain words must be cut before the film is given a certificate for general release. And these are all attitudes which clearly need to be questioned. I think that one of the great things about the 66A judgment is that it has opened the realm of discussion on all these aspects of freedom of expression in ways that I believe we can meaningfully uh, advance. Now, how we can do that uh, and to what extent the government is going to give us a chance to do it in parliament, but I think that people like us do need to try and take this forward. Thank you.